Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone said, come out of the trenches and get the job done. You see, the trench is a good thing in your life. We all need trenches. In war, trenches represent the place where you retreat. If you're overpowered or overshadowed or you're tired, you can retreat into the trenches. It's a place where some rearm. It's the place where some go in hiding. Some will even go in sleeping, you know, sleep that they need, resting in the trenches. So the trenches do not mean a negative. Most times the trenches are dirty. They are actual, it's actually most time only dirt. Or stones, it's muddy, it's, it's open, it's, it's, it's temporary. Hmm. But I hear the Lord saying, come out of these trenches and get the job done. The job must get done. Glory to God. What kind of job must get done some folks need to open new churches. Some need to visit the mission field who have not gone or have not gone sufficiently. Some need to go into a city and begin to do street preaching beyond what you're doing right now. As a matter of fact, some who, have, who should have been doing street preaching and personal witnessing have not yet risen up. So that includes you and those who are already doing it. That they are some who God depending on to enter into a city. Early in the 90s, I remember going to right there into London. Not knowing London. Arriving in England 130 miles away from London. Not knowing my way to London. Getting the map. Getting a map. And finding my way. Got a group from the local community who didn't know their way to London. They're watching now so they know I'm saying it like it is. And I took the map and led them to London. Not knowing where in London I am, but I just want a square. So I just find a square, come out of the car, and stand like a fool and just preach. The folks who were with me were so shocked that I could do stuff like that. They just began to preach too. I've never done it before. Now what I'm trying to say is that there's some about taking on this thing that when you do it I'm not talking about like how we preach every Saturday I'm talking about some crazy preacher say listen I'm going to Pennsylvania and if I can get three people with me I'm going in the square I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach for an hour I'm not talking about all day I'm talking about getting something started when I leave Florida to come here you don't know how I get here I plan to stop in every city on my way from Florida. And God said, you don't have to do that. So what I'm talking about, I'm talking about some folks who are willing to land in that city. Right there in California, as God gave that revelation. Somebody need to go in Los Angeles. Nobody much don't have to know about it. But carry a recorder, carry a, a, a phone recorder or something and stand in the square and just preach. Some of them come out of the trenches and get the job done. I'm talking about doing some things beyond you have even seen in the harvest army. I'm talking about some who have never visited the mission field, never been to the conventions, never been to anywhere. I hear the laws, you got to break out of that. You got to make a visit. Those who may can't go to another country, make a visit somewhere. Somewhere, some other mission in the country, something. A prison ministry, some hospital ministry. Hmm. Preaching in other churches, free of course. Etc., etc. But I hear the Lord saying, Come out of the trenches and get the job done. And many of us, God wants us to come out of those trenches. And here, here are some of the trenches. Some of us say, Well, I am married. And because I am married, 
I can't do what I need to do. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 29. I'm talking about the trenches now. He said, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Come on, somebody. The fact that you are married should not prevent God's revival in your life. God knows every situation. But God also knows that the pastors and the bishops and the apostles can't get it done. Glory to God. God knows that the full-time ministers can't get it done. <laughs> so automatically, God expects, come on, those who are not full-time to get it done. Amen. Automatically, God knows your different situations and he expects you to get it done. Are we getting the revelation? <laughs> Are we getting the revelation? For God says the harvest, Matthew 9, 38, is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. So automatically, God is saying the laborers are those who are laboring secularly, but need to labor spiritually as well. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Some wives can't even do, some wives can't even do without their husband. They don't want to learn to drive. Can I teach you? You know what? Some of you ain't going to come back. No, you're going to come back. Come on, somebody. You got to learn to drive. What are you trying to control your husband for? No, you didn't know. Come on, somebody. You got quiet. You got to learn to drive. You got to drive. What if my wife never drives? All right. Come on now. I got into trouble right there. What did Bishop Collins' wife never dry? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Some husband can't move on the field because of their wife. Come on. Come on. You got to be as if you're not married. You got to give all that the family needs, but you got to go. You got to find a way, wife, to go on the field. Come on, somebody. You got to give some time, maybe some time, some daycare time to your friend, and your friend give you back some daycare time. Just quit, quit, quit using it. Oh, come on. Sir. For a whole year, for a whole year, for a whole year, quit that. Come out of that trench. Come out of that trench, wife. Get out of that trench. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone said, come out of the trench and get the job done. Child care, child care. Hmm. What well, can you pay a relative for a while? Come on, can you hire a daycare for a while, for a week? You just wanna, you just wanna get started. Ask those who taught it was hard, but they just got started. Come on, somebody. And once you get started, hallelujah, you'll find ways the next time. Child care, that's your trench. First Samuel 1 verse 27. <laughs> For this child I prayed, and that was Hannah. And the Lord had given me my petition which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worship the Lord there. Do not let your children be your trench. Glory to God from getting the job done. Come out of the trench of child care and get the job done. Say amen somebody. Another trench is infirmity. Infirmity. Some of us say well I'm ill. I'm not doing so well. No. The Bible says that Job in chapter 42 and verse 10 and the Lord turned the captivity of Jacob, sorry, of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. In your infirmity, do something. In your infirmity, in the midst of your infirmity, do something unusual. Do not use your infirmity. 
as a trench. Come out of the trench and get the job done. Hallelujah. Somebody say to me, come out of the trench and get the job done. Are you married? Come out of the trench. Are you in childcare? Come out of the trench. Do you have infirmity? Come out of the trench and get the job done. It's God's revival time. Well, number four, somebody say, well, I'm unregarded. I'm not recognized. Nobody regard me. Hmm. Mark 6 and verse 4. But Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without a honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. There are many who greatly honor my wife and myself in ministry, but there are some who brazenly dishonor us. Come on, you got to deal with both of them. There are many who honor us greatly wherever we go, but there are some, no matter what we do, they choose to dishonor. So you will be dishonored, especially in your country, by your kin, and buy your house. But if you will go, come on, somebody. If you'll come out of that dishonorable trench, God will use you. You ain't saying amen. When you finish today, you're gonna come out of those trenches. My God, you're gonna you're gonna be tormented for a couple of days because a trench ain't gonna work no more. My God, a mercy. Somebody said, Come out of the trenches. And get the job done. God give me a job. The Lord told me that those who are full time can't do it. That's a hard reality to face as a preacher. So those mighty men and mighty women, pastors and evangelists and apostles and bishops can't do it. God said that those who have got their excuses, they are the ones I've called to do it. Ooh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. The ones full of the good reasons, they are the ones the call is on. Well, my job, number five, up the trenches. My job, my profession. I can't get the job done because of my profession, because of my job. Matthew 22, 21. Jesus says, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's are there, and unto God the things which are God. You've got a good job, you've got a good profession, be faithful. Come on, but count up your leave. Count your leave and pack up your leave for the Lord's work. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody with me. My God, I, I knew it was going to be tough. I knew it was going to be tough. Come on, somebody. Quit that job excuse. Oh, you may lose it. Come on, somebody here. A little bit. We don't work for nobody seven days. That's of the devil. Leave that job tonight. Call him tonight and tell him as of today I'm going to take one day off. I'm a very good worker. Hmm? I ain't working seven days. As of, ten, after, as of this week I work for six days and no more. I'm going to work good for you. I'm going to do just as good as the seven days but six days and that's it. and forget God's work. Come on, I'm getting deep here, somebody. I wish I could feel something. I don't feel nothing yet. Come on, somebody here. Somebody say, Lord, let him feel something. And God of mercy. Glory to God. Somebody say, come out of the trenches. I begin to feel something. Man. What did you say, my God of mercy? And get the job done. Work good. We had to work.
second time, Junior, ask for your leaf, you're going to get it. Because you're going to church. You're going to convention. You're going to revival. You're going to the mission field. You're going to preach. Don't preach on your job. Sorry, I, I, I know it don't sound deep. But I'm teaching you. I know it don't sound, but I'm teaching. That's not where you preach. That's not in the Bible. Come on. You work on your job and get money. I know, I know it don't sound deep. You know, if one person is quite interested and is a friend and whatever, you know, but don't go stand up in the midst of the bank and say, Come on, somebody. Go outside the bank down to the crossroad. And go back in the bank, go take money. Come on, somebody. So when you're ready to go preach, they can't hold you. And you do your job well. Someone said, come on. I'll be changing and get the job. Well, when I'm studying, I'm doing my master's degree. That's why you don't see me. Ha! Ecclesiastes 12, verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. <laughs> First studying, let us hear the conclusion of the old matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the old duty of man. You are studying, but don't use it as a trench against the job getting done. Say amen, somebody. Say amen, somebody. No church girl fail. No church boy fail. Come on, somebody. I'm not gonna I can tell you from experience. My two children have been through college. I never tell them one day, say, go to church. I never. Ask my wife. I never tell them. Yeah, you're not going to church. Never. Never. In your whole life. Say, are you going to church? You need to go to church. No. They do more than I. Come on, somebody. And pass everything they touch. Everything they look at, they, they pass. I don't, I don't know when they finish college. Zip, zip, boom. Church! God's work. Mighty work. The young man to that 24-7 doing God's work. Non-stop, non-stop. Non-stop, non-stop. Glory to God. Come out of the study trench. Study, reach where you're reaching. God won't stop you from getting your secular work. But you gotta do His work, and you need to pass the exam. Come on, somebody. Let's say a lot about that. No, don't, don't, don't go quote me that day. This church don't want people to go to school. You lying devil. Come on, somebody. Every one you get a doctorate, but you're going to be a preaching doctor. I'm going to lose to somebody here. Come on, somebody. You're going to be a missionary teacher. You're not talking to me, somebody. Come on, somebody. You're going to be a witnessing banker. Come on. You ain't saying amen. So I said, come out of the trench and get the job done. Nobody don't want their trend. Some folks got heart going like this. Say, you soon get to my trend. I won't get to it. I won't get to your trend. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I'm broke. I can't go nowhere. I'm broke. I ain't got no money, pastor. I ain't got no money to go to the like You liar. God of mercy. You never know it's going to be so hard. Mombrata sataraba. Luke 22 35 and he said unto them when I sent you without purse and script and shoes lack ye anything did you lack anything when I send you with nothing 
Let me tell you, church, when that anointing come upon you, you don't need money. Money come to you. You ain't saying amen. You just make up your mind. I'm going to do God's work. Hey, man, you'll find money on your doorstep. Come on, somebody. Mission field is a money magnet. You should write that in the back of your Bible. You didn't get that one. You didn't get that one. Hallelujah. Any one of you be willing for the mission field. Money must come. Quit it, quit it, quit it. Cannot lack, will not lack. You got some folks that's depend on other ministers and other ministries to support them. They haven't gone out full yet. They're still cuddling in the middle. And they say, Well, you got to support us. You're a church over yonder. You got to support us. We learn those churches that go hard on the mission don't need no help from headquarters, don't need no help from general. Those who go hard. Every week they're having crusade. Every week they're on the street. Yeah. They're preaching like thunder. Their rent and mortgage be like nothing. Girl, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. When they sit down, do nothing. And just waiting on monies. They never reach anywhere. I gotta say it like it is. When they do the real thing, money have to come. Bill gonna get paid. One of the demonstrations that you're in the will of God is that it get paid. The will get paid. The ear fear get paid. Say amen, somebody. Your food get paid. Come on, somebody. It's going to be rough because we sent some folks in the past. Some of these guys who went to the country, you know, and some of them, I heard of one evangelist who ate cornflakes for a whole week. No milk, no sugar. But that's condo. Don't look around. Oh, glory to God. But today I see her. She's blessed. Have good husband. Nice children. Come on, somebody. I heard about a young man. He can't find no food. They put him in a house to stay in a certain country. And he's preaching. And they, but God, but in the house, they have a fridge. And he said, my God, I got to find food somewhere. And he look in the freezer. He sees some chicken in there, in the freezer. But he don't know how to cook. He was about 18. He don't know nothing. All he know, you put water in pot and cook. And he put that chicken in that, in that boiling water. Come on, somebody. No salt, no pepper. Come on, somebody. And he got down and he eat that stuff. And today he's a reverend. You ain't saying amen. You ain't saying amen. Come on. Yeah, that's how God does. I'm telling that's how I'm telling I'm telling you, this thing is powerful. This thing is powerful. Come out of the trench. I'm telling you, come out of all them, all them messages. Quick, never you say one more time. It's money one more. Don't no, say as long as you're ready under the holy anointing of God, God's gonna make a way. One young man was only 17. He said, I'm going. Today's a mighty man to God. Never ask for money. One young man was only 16. His parents call and say, why are you gone? And he told his parents, oh, come when I was not saved, you never say nothing. Come on, I'm doing my father's business. Today's a reverend. Come on, somebody. Someone said, come out. Up the trenches and get the job done. Some say, well, it's a risk. I can't take the risk. I might die. You know, they might kill me. I can't do that. Matthew 16, 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it some of them come out of the trenches and get the job done I'm unqualified I'm unqualified I wasn't trained I, I don't know as much as the pastor glory to God I could go deep into that Amos 7 verse 14 Amos said then Amos then, then answered Amos and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet, neither was I a prophet son, but I was a herdsman and a gatherer of sycamore food. 
verse 16, and the Lord took me as I followed the flock and the Lord said unto me, my God, go prophesy unto my people, Israel. Give God praise. Someone said, come out of the trenches and get the job done. We can't, we can't, we can't speak all the trenches to, tonight. But if you're married, come out of the trenches. If you do child care, come out of the trenches. If you are infirmed, if you are ill, come out of the trenches. If you are unregarded, dishonored, and disrespected, come out of the trenches. If you have a good job, my God, come out of the trenches. If you are in secular studies, necessary secular studies, come out of the trenches, study, but do God's work. If you claim to be broke, come out of the trenches and get the job done. If you're considering the, the mission to be a race, come out of the trench and get the job done. If you say you're unqualified, come out of the trenches and get the job done. If you're settled, let's say you're settled in a certain country, or in a certain city, you've already bought a house and you, you have a good profession and a good job and you're already settled. My God, I hear the Lord say, come out of the trenches. Can I tell you something? No matter how big your house is right here, amen, if you answer the call, God's going to give you a house where you go. You're going to give him, come on, come on. I, 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 I'm ripping some foundation. I'm ripping some stuff up right now. Come on, somebody. Bishop, leave, my, leave my, my, my space right now. Don't go there. I'm giving you the bomb. I'm giving you the bomb. If you respond to that call, glory to God, your little house is nothing. You're going to get a bigger house. Come on, somebody. Your little job is nothing. You're going to get a bigger job. Come on, somebody. Just a few months ago, a little man of God get a right here and went down to another city in America. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God, you know, his whole family just get up and say, we're going down. We're going to answer the call to go down to that city in the USA. Come on, somebody. In months, he got a better job than he had in this city. Months after, he bought a house. It's that, come on, come on, come on. You're not, you're not with me here, somebody. It's just a year. It's only a year. I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand. It's not the house you have. It's not the black house or the frame house you have. It's what's in you. Come on, somebody. And when you respond to what's in you, house are the services. <laughs> Job, if you're a good nurse, you work in any state. You're not talking to me, somebody. If you're a good banker, you work in any state. Come on, somebody. I me say, say amen, somebody. If you're a good plumber, you work in any state. If you're a good taxi driver, you work in any. You are you with me, somebody here? It's not what's out, it's what's in you. If you respond, amen, to the call of God and come out of the trench, what you think you got here, amen, will be multiplied on the field. Stand up on your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone said, come out of the trenches and get the job done. My children in school, come out of the trenches. They'll get into better schools. Come on, somebody. Come out of the trenches and get the job done. Said the Lord. Tonight, before we minister in that particular area, we want to open the door if there's anyone here tonight not saved. We're going to invite you. Four, five, six, seven. Ten of you here, not saved. We want to lead to Jesus. If you're here this evening and you're not saved, and you want to be saved, I want to ask you if you'll raise your right hand, and we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. If you're not saved, raise your right hand, and we're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless on the white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Hey. Are you washed in the blood in my soul? Are you one? 
words that heaven rejoice over one sinner that repented and my dear it's no mistake that you're here today I'm just going to lead you in a prayer of repentance you're just going to ask the Lord to just come into your heart say Lord I recognize that you died on the cross for my sins and I receive you now in my heart you ready ready to pray that prayer amen amen, amen. So, dear Lord I come to you recognizing that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved Lord, I recognize that you died on the cross to save me from my sins. Right now, Lord, I ask you to wash me, cleanse me, purify me, remove, Lord, everything from me that is not of you. I receive you right now, Jesus, into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Satan, I am finished with you. I will serve you no more. I make a decision today to serve Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you believe that the Lord heard that prayer? Yes. God said in his word that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, that is all it takes for you to be saved. Amen. Just stretch your hands up um, to her. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. As we just pray. Father God, we just present, oh God Almighty, this woman, Lord God Almighty, who have prayed, oh God, this prayer of repentance. Lord Jesus, we thank you, oh God Almighty, that your saving power, your salvation power has come, oh God Almighty. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the change, oh God Almighty, the renewal that you're creating right now in her life. Father, we thank you for saving her we thank you Lord God Almighty heaven is rejoicing right now Lord and we rejoice too for the soul that has been saved keep her right now in Jesus name amen hallelujah somebody bless the Lord hallelujah just go with sister JC and bless the Lord hallelujah 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 those trenches that's holding you back. Any trench holding you back, just come right now. You want to stay in there, you can stay. We want to come out of it, come right now. Ah, baka, ta, ba, ba. You don't have to come, you don't have to come. But if you want to come, you come. We need, some, we need somebody to go in, in, in London City and stand in the square and just preach. Just, 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 just take the plane and go do it and come back. Just do it your own way. Toronto. Toronto, Fort Lauderdale, Los Angeles. Come on, somebody. We need somebody going in Newark Square and just preach. I, I, I must barely touch in this thing. I must barely, I'm telling you, it's major. All I know, the established clergy can do it. Can do it. Can do it. Do not be done. Crazy like that. It's crazy like that. And God said, Don't leave your job. You gotta work your job. If you don't work your job, I'm gonna preach. I got a family. You're an infidel. You're worse than So don't miss me now. Nobody run this. I'm gonna leave my job. No, 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 no. It don't work like that. But while you are there, you are climax. It ain't gonna be an 
excuse for you to preach in Germany. No, I got in the trouble. At least in your, 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 your working money can go to Germany. No more job excuse that I can't go to South Africa to do two weeks of preaching on the street. Say God, you man of God, you woman of God, who's afraid to go full time. Some of you, some of you, some of you are full time ordained, and, and you gotta put yourself together, save some money for six months. Can I get in trouble here? Come on, my God, Jesus, save hard for six months, and make sure your wife is working and go full time. Nobody don't want these plain things in church. <laughs> 